Hey, Blender is the biggest asset to any artist, animator, or anyone with a creative bone in his body. That's why it's used in those movies you love, as well as those Instagram posts you see. If you're like me, you have this need to create, to express yourself through art, animation, or storytelling. Maybe that need has become repressed due to the steep learning curve that Blender presents. So all the knowledge you're ever going to need in Grease Pencil has been compressed in this video to make you a Grease Pencil expert. So you can start expressing your creativity. This is 20 Grease Pencil tips in 13 minutes. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so this video reaches more people like us. Let's get started then. When you open up the software, click on 2D animation and the workspace you'll be taken to will already have a Grease Pencil object created. But if you want to add a new Grease Pencil object to a 3D scene, just press Shift A and add your Grease Pencil object. As you can see, we're in object mode right now. So let's press tab and change into draw mode before we can draw anything in Blender. This is the tab you select your brushes from. We're using the pencil brush right now. To create a new material, go to the material tab and press the plus button at the top and press new. I'm leaving the stroke box selected because I only want to draw a stroke. If you only want to draw in a fill material, uncheck the stroke box and check the fill box, then select the color that you want your fill to be, then draw in your fill color. If you want your drawing to have both stroke and fill elements, leave the two boxes checked. I'm using a mouse by the way, so don't mind the wonky drawings. The drawing tools you need, such as the brush, the fill, the eraser, as well as other tools can be found at the left side of the screen. To adjust your brush size, you can press F and drag. You can also use the bracket buttons to increase or decrease your brush size. At the top window here, you can increase your brush radius. You can adjust the strength of your brush. You can turn off or turn on the pen sensitivity and many more. Now you're ready to draw in Blender, but first you have to consider the orientation your drawing is going to be in. You're going to want to click on this box at the top and check canvas. That turns on this grid we can see on the screen here. This grid is going to inform us of where our drawings are going to be. At the top of the screen we can see that our orientation is set to origin and view. That means that our canvas is locked to the world origin and the position of our strokes depend on how we view the canvas. I have an idea to draw a row of houses just for practice. Nothing serious, there's nothing we're going to do with this project when we finish. This is just for the sake of explanation. Now, if we would change our orientation from view to front, now, no matter where we face, our canvas is always pointed in the front view. So, uh, it doesn't depend on how we view it, but it's always going to be drawn in that front perspective. Same thing happens if we change it from front to side. It's basically the same thing, but in a different direction. Our drawings are locked to kind of the side perspective. And the same thing for if we change it from side to top perspective. It's just basically going to be a top-down kind of thing where we can only draw things flat on the ground like that. You could be wondering to yourself, what if you don't want your drawing to be on the origin? You can always change your course, your canvas to be on the 3d cursor so whenever your 3d cursor is that's where your canvas is and you can simply like change the location of your 3d cursor by pressing shift and right click as you can see you can already do a lot with these few tips i've told you like this is basically how most grease pencil uh, objects are, are drawn
now if you want to draw on a 3d object just go and change your orientation to surface and adjust the offset the offset is just basically the distance between your drawing and the 3d object you're trying to draw on top so just adjust it so it's like not too far from it and also not inside the object it's it can take a few tries for you to find the right offset but just take your time In your object data properties tab, you are going to see your grease pencil layers, which basically by default is supposed to be lines and fills. The fills are under the lines. Now let's go back to the material tab with our fill layer active. Let's select a new material and add some color to the houses. I wanted to add something here. The only reason you can see the lines through the fills is because all the lines are on top of all the fills. In the grease pencil layer menu you can adjust the layers however you want to but since this is just a tutorial i decided not to overthink it another thing you might want to do is uncheck use lights in the grease pencil layer menu in edit mode you can basically edit any of your strokes from moving them around to scaling them to rotating them uh, you can even increase the thickness of any of your strokes if your strokes are looking wonky and you don't like how they look, you can basically always enter sculpt mode and straighten out those strokes. Now we want to start animating, but before you can animate anything, you have to be in the 2D animation workspace. Before we start animating, make sure auto keyframing is on. I'm going to add another layer on top. This is the only layer we're going to animate. I'm going to draw something that looks like a car to animate for the sake of this tutorial. In your timeline, you can press Shift D to duplicate your keyframes and press G to move them back and forth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to another keyframe and with automatic keyframe turned on, go to edit mode and shift our car. As you can see, another keyframe has been created. So that's the magic of automatic keyframing. I took it one step further and I went to edit mode and interpolated the frames. Now Blender has filled in the in-between frames for me. No need to uh, animate those frames manually by myself. Obviously you can make the animation faster. It only depends on the amount of frames in between. A faster animation has fewer frames. To use onion skins, you have to be in either solid mode or material preview mode to toggle onion skins on or off just click on this icon now let's talk about multi-frame editing multi-frame editing is a tool that allows you to edit all of your frames or all the frames of your animation at once just make sure you have the frames you want to edit selected in the timeline first before clicking on the multi-frame editing button Now I'm here in multi-frame editing. I want to change all the wheel colors to be black. So what I do is I select all the strokes that are describing the wheels of this car and go into edit mode and assign them to another color. In this case, a black color. The white background can be a bit depressing, so let's do something about that. Go to world properties and change it from white to whatever color you might like. You know, I'm going for a purple kind of color because if, you're, if you know me at all, you know I love purple. Now let's talk about modifiers. Go to the object mode and select the modifier tab. Let's add a new modifier. There are a lot of modifiers for grease pencil, but the ones I mostly use are noise modifier and the time offset modifier. So let's use the time offset modifier to create a loop. Go to custom range, tick it. Then what you want to do is set the number of frames to the amount of frames that your animation is going for. So for example, the car frame ends at the 28th frame here. Yeah. 
so i'm going to add 28 to the end and when i press enter the frame automatically loops every 28 frames now let's add a noise modifier so go and click noise what noise basically does it gives a bit of life to the animation it kind of gives everything a, a will i say a wobbly effect uh, i feel like that kind of sells the life because things are not static so what i'm going to do i'm going to reduce the position to reduce the amount of like wiggle the animation has just give it a little bit of wiggle and that will be okay Let's talk about camera movement. Click on your camera, then press N and click on view, then press camera to view. Now your camera can will just move with your view. Anywhere you move, that's where your camera moves as well. I just want to add a kind of panning view where like the camera is panning from the left to the right. So in order to that do that, I'll just go up to the layout workspace with auto keyframe it's on done i'm just going to go to a later frame shift my camera a bit to get that kind of panning motion the last tip is actually about your render settings Go to the pass tab and enable combined and Z passes. This is what you need to do if you have any grease pencil in this scene. Then go and click render and render animation. So this is the finished animation and that's the end of the video. Um, this was actually a very long video. I didn't plan for it to be very long. I know people don't really make it to the end of these videos, but I really wanted to pour out everything I knew into this video so um grease pencil beginners won't be so clueless um i know you're probably people have clicked away from this video but if you're still watching i want you i want to say a big thank you to you um i didn't really expect people to watch me as much as they do so thank you so much for watching i'll see you on the next one